In this lesson, you will learn about file input using the scanner class. A few previews of some advanced file processing techniques will be presented. You will also do various labs using all previously learned techniques. Software packages quite often involve multiple files that interact with each other, with data values input from and stored to files other than the executable file. The process for inputting data from a file is quite easy. See the next slide for a very simple example. A data file is simply a text file, as shown on the left, like stuff.in. The extension can be .in, .dat, .text, or any extension that is not a normally reserved one like .exe or .bat. Below is a program showing the steps necessary for file input. Two Java package import statements are required. Import java.util.star, import java.io.star. The statement throws IO exception is required after the main heading. This is necessary to enable file input. The reason is fairly simple. When creating a statement in a program attempting to link to an external file, it is quite possible that file may not be there, at which point a runtime error or exception is thrown, specifically the file not found exception. Using this statement is one of two ways to deal with this issue, essentially assuring the compiler that you, the programmer, are aware this may happen and are okay with it. A better and more graceful way to deal with this failure issue is to use a try-catch block, which is a lesson for another time. The link between the main file and the data file is made by this statement, which creates a new scanner object, f, which is then linked to the data file, stuff.in. Note, the data file must be in the same folder as the executable file, otherwise a path must precede it inside the quotes. Note, this lesson series will not be using paths. Once the two Java packages are imported, the exception handling statement is included, and the scanner file object created and linked, the rest of the program works just like keyboard input. The f file input object uses the next command in the same way the keyboard object kb used it in the previous lesson series. Remember, the next command only takes the first word after the data pointer, wherever it is in the file, since it uses the next white space as the delimiter, just as we learned in the keyboard input process in the previous lesson. Although a file input program will work just fine without doing this, it is important to close the door at the end of a file input process as is seen in this final closing statement. For trivial programs such as these, it doesn't really matter, but for professional-level software packages, it is really important to close anything in a program that is opened to minimize any possible side effects or other issues that might arise. With the next line command replacing next, you can see the entire line is retrieved from the data file again, just as it did for keyboard input. Note, as discussed in Lesson 3a, the same next-line quirk issue exists with file input as did with keyboard input. So be aware of that and use the same fix as necessary. Here you see an example of a person's return address stored in a file, retrieved by the program, and output to the screen. This program example gives you a glimpse of how powerful file input can be using some advanced processes. Although you won't learn these techniques in depth yet, their function is fairly evident if you examine them carefully. The data file contains several names. 
not in alphabetical order. The program uses a while loop to read all the names and adds each to an array list of strings. The list is sorted in alpha order and then output using a for each loop. These advanced techniques, the while loop, the array list collections.sort, and the for each loop, will all be studied later on in much more detail. You will use this technique for lab 3b9. Here is essentially the same program using integers instead. You will use this technique for lab 3b10. Expanding further into advanced techniques, this program introduces counting and accumulating inside a loop using two utility variables sum and count. As each value is output, its value is accumulated into a total amount and counted so that the average of all the numbers can be calculated and output at the end. It is necessary to cast as a double the sum variable so that decimal division takes place, otherwise any fractional part would be discarded since both sum and count are integer variables. See Lesson 2c, More Operations, to review division rules. You will use this technique for Lab 3b11. Lesson Summary This lesson showed you how to input data from a file, including all the necessary setup steps, as well as the input commands, which were exactly the same as the ones you learned for the keyboard input. A few previews of advanced techniques were also shown. The labs? File input will be the primary input mechanism for labs from here on. For this lesson's lab assignments, simply redo all the labs from Lesson 3a, with file input instead. Also, for three of the labs, 3b9, 3b10, and 3b11, you will use the three advanced techniques shown in this lesson, exactly as you see them. You now have learned and seen demonstrated how to manage file input. So now proceed to the exercises and the labs associated with this lesson.